My name is Amy Fredebo, and I'm from Weston and Sampson. And today I'm going to talk to you about the backflow software that we have written to help you manage your cross connection program. So managing the cross connection program can be done uh, on paper, on Excel, with software. Um, and I'm here to tell you how software would make your life a lot easier. So currently, if you're using paper, you um, have someone in the office who's managing the work and they uh, write out the papers, they print them out, they give them to the tester. Tester takes these papers into the field, they do the test, they fill it out. Then that comes back into the office and someone is inputting them into something, um, either uh, Excel or file cabinets or whatever your system is for managing your work. And then um, reports are created manually from that data or from Excel. Um, and then the cycle starts again and we manage the next piece of work. So a different way to do this would be to use software. And um, the work still needs to be managed. Some it can be done by someone in the office or it can be done by the tester. So the work gets managed, assigned to the tester or decided they're gonna do this zone or this street or this complex. And then the tester tests it, data loads automatically to the system. Everyone else using it can see it and the reports are auto-created. You can see how quite a few steps were removed. This is a lot easier, a lot faster and even more accurate. So this is an example of how the backflow software would manage some of the program and the data. So every time you do a test, the due date is going to advance automatically um, per your state's rules. So if it's Massachusetts, uh, the double checks are going to go out a year. The seasonal uh, RPs will go out a year. The non-seasonal RPs will go out six months. You can sort and filter all of the different work that you have to be done. You can assign this work to surveyors and testers that are loaded and configured into the software. And you can add appointment dates and times to the work so that the tester knows when they should be doing them. And someone else knows not to do them because they're already appointment, had an appointment made and assigned. So how does it work? It runs on your tablet or it runs on a computer. It can run on, on either, it can run on iPads, it can run on Androids. It loads the data instantly to the server. If it doesn't have service, if you're in the basement, something somewhere like that, then it will save it on the tablet. And then uh, you can do it manually or every half an hour, it will try to load itself. Now we have a lot of reports that are pre-made in the backflow software that you can use. I know the report everybody's always concerned about is your annual statistical report, your ASR. So this can be run uh, really anytime, but you want to run it after the end of the year. Um, and you can run that and it will give you all the numbers for you to plug into the ASR for the state. There's also production reports if you want to see how many tests or surveys each of your testers did in a given time frame. There's a billing report, and then there's a lot of other reports that you can run to manage your work, your invoices, et cetera. Oh, and a few other features. Sorry, I mentioned the invoices already. You, you um, can create notices on your tests or your surveys. So you would configure your notice language for your first, second, third, and if you wanted one, a fourth notice. And so um, all the tests and all the surveys get a first, but the fails would get a second, third, and a fourth notice. You can configure how many days apart you want those, like 15 days, 21 days. Um, invoices are also um, automatically created, so you could send out an initial invoice, and you can configure your prices for your tests, your surveys, and your retests and your resurveys. If you wish to get the data out of the Backflow software, you can export most of the screens uh, to get out your facility listing, your account numbers, uh, whatever you wanted to pull out. And if the uh, standard invoice reports were not enough, we can always create a custom invoice export to send data to your billing software. We've done this for quite a few different softwares and that will uh, create a file that you can then import right into 
Munis or QZ or Vader or whoever you're using. So that's a very quick look at the backflow, a presentation on the backflow software. So let's go look at the software itself. So this is the control panel where the software opens right to. This is a test system. So I'm going to do things in here that you would only do live in production. I'm going to um, create things and assign things. Normally, you would only do these if you know, you'd only create a test if it happened in real life. But again, this is our test system. So we're free to do things in here. Uh, but this is the same piece of software that runs in production. This is just test data. So there's a lot going on here. So this is your first screen. The software opens to the control panel. In this grid here, we have work. So this is not a given facility, even though it kind of looks like one with the facility name. This is all of the work that this town or demo client has to do. And you can see there's two different kinds of work. There's test work and there's survey work. This work has some default columns right now. We've got a due date, a facility name, an address, if it's assigned to anyone, and a work type. One of the most powerful features of the Backflow software is that you can add in a lot of other columns to this grid, and then you can sort them and filter them however you'd like. Now, we leave these five columns as the default columns because the testers and the surveyors using a tablet don't have a lot of physical space to hold columns. So these are our five default columns, but we can add in and remove columns anytime we want. For example, we're going to click on this little triangle here and then we can see the columns. So let's say we wanted to see everything. Let's see, we want to see what's in a failed state. So we're going to pick previous result. And if you noticed, it changed right there and the previous result filter dropped in, excuse me, column dropped in. But now we're going to filter. So we added a column, previous result. And now we're going to say we would like to see just the test work. And I don't know if you've noticed right before I click that, I'm just going to show you that we have this little work count here that always showed us, shows us how much work we're seeing. So we're going to filter by test work. And you notice that work count went down just a little bit. And then we're going to check by previous results in a failed state. And this will show us all of our work that we have in a failed state. So that's just a very quick example of how you can use the control panel to sort and filter your work to see different things. You could do the same thing if you wanted to see, say, every piece of work in a um, complex of, say, a hospital that you had grouped together or every piece of work on a given street, or every piece of work due before, say, end of the half, or end of the year, or every, let's say, RP work before the end of the year. That way you could see what had been done or, and what hadn't been done. You could see every RP work before the end of the half, too, to see how you're doing to get your RPCs done. So you can sort and filter this control panel in a lot of different ways. I'm just going to clear our filters so we go back to our work. Now, so far, we've just looked at the work, but you see there's this little key up here of these colors. So these are the different states that your work can be in. And you can see this one's in yellow. So this one is in the needs review state. So if we go back to our columns, and we're going to take out the previous result column that we added before, and we're going to add in the work state column. So every piece of work is in a certain state. And so available is the default state. So when you do a test, the work is in, after you do the test, the work is reset to an available state. If you add a testable device, it's going to be in an available, as work will be in an available state. So here, these are in available states, but you can change it to needs review, unavailable, priority, or appointment. To do that, you're going to select on the piece of work and you're going to go up here to the work action menu and you're going to change the work state. You'll pick change work state. You'll choose your state. Let's put this one in priority. And now you can see it has changed to mauve color for priority. 
um, when we were in work action, you could see that there's multiple other actions you can take on all the work in this grid. You can assign it, you can unassign it. We changed the work state. You can also add an appointment date and time. Another thing you could do is that if you um, needed to go out without your device, let's say today, you can select a piece of work and go up here to work action and ask for a test form. And it's gonna fill out the test work that you chose into a form that can be printed to take with you. So if for some reason your tablet was broken or you could do this on your computer and you could print that out to take it with you. And then later it would be easy to be entered as it has a serial number, um, the make, the model, the device, everything that's needed. And let's talk about that serial number for a second. So up here on the top of the screen, we have what we call our quick search boxes. So you can quick search by putting in a serial number, a barcode, or a cross-connection ID. And it would be similar to taking this piece of work and opening it. I know we haven't done that yet, but if you were to open this piece of work, find it on the control panel and then open it, it would have the same behavior as you dropping in a serial number in the quick search. So that's just a really fast way to access work for a tester or for someone entering data. Okay, so we've covered the grid, the work action menu, the different states and our counts, and we cleared some filters. So let's go ahead and open a piece of work. Whether you open a piece of test work or you open a piece of survey work, you're gonna to open to what we call the facility screen. So when we open this, you can see I'm gonna get some tabs. So the screen changed, I'm not on the control panel anymore. I'm in the cross connection tab. So it drops us right to the facility screen, whether you open a piece of test work or survey work. However, because I opened a piece of test work, I do have um, the hazard listing tab, the hazard tab, which has all my hazard information in it, which we'll see in just a second, and the test form for the device that I selected, which also has all my information in it, already pre-filled and ready to go. But let's just talk about the facility screen for a second while we're here. So the facility screen has all the information for this facility. This is very important because facilities can change, right? So this is a CVS today, but it could be a Rite Aid or a Walgreens in six months. So when you go out to do a test or a survey, and this is a good time to just look at your business name, see if it's the same, can ask about your owner, um, and see if that has changed. And then the mailing address is an important piece of information because if you use the notices and the invoices in the backflow software, they will use this mailing address. Another important thing to ask while you're there is your contacts. This is also used um, on the control panel and on some of the notices. So this is the facility screen. There's all your facility information. And then we have the contacts. There's also what we call a uh, facility level notes. So there's four different places in the backflow software that you can enter notes. And this is where you can enter them at the facility level. This is a wonderful place to tell the future you or tester where to enter, who to talk to, where to get the key, um, who to call, all those kind of things. And then if there is a survey for the facility that has been done, you will see it down here in the bottom and you can select it and look at it if you'd like. We'll just make this a little bigger so we can see it. And you can see it's a facility report, has signatures, has the pass or fail. Okay, so that's a brief run at the facility screen. We opened a piece of test work, so let's jump over to the hazard listings. So the hazard listing shows all your hazards and all your device combinations in the facility. And they're pre-sorted by active. We haven't talked about states, but devices can have different states. And so we put the active up front because usually testers are gonna run through and test the active ones. And you can see we've got a little bit of information, the next test date, the last test date, the previous result, where we are, CVS. Now we've already opened one, 
So it's already loaded to the hazard screen. If we wanted to open a different one, we could select a different one and select open. This is also where you can add hazards and device combinations. Let's jump to the hazard screen. Again, we have the default information up at the top, where we are, our water account number. And here's the hazard specific information, the water use, the location, the level, seasonal or not. We talked about notes a minute ago on the facility screen. Here's the hazard notes. And then here's the very specific device information. And this is the device information for the piece of work that we opened on the control panel a couple of minutes ago. So you can see when it's due, it's in an active state. Here's its device identifiers. You don't have to have all of these. Most clients only have one. And then the manufacturer make, model, type, and size. And if it has a test report, it will be down here at the bottom. And just like the survey report that we viewed, you could select it and view it. And this is also, you can also add um, hazard and device from here. I mentioned you could do it from the hazard listing screen. You can do it from here too. You can also edit them and delete them from here. So let's jump over to our test form. And just like a couple of those other screens, we've got some default information up here at the top where you are, your water account number, your make, your model, your serial number. If the tester is loaded into the Backflow software and has a valid uh, license that hasn't expired in the Backflow software, the name will auto load here. So if you're gonna do a test, you wanna choose your tester, unless it auto loaded, you wanna choose your test kit. And the date also defaults to today. The other thing you really need to select is you need to select the test type. So test type is very important. This shows up on your ASR. So it's either initial, a retest, or a schedule. We're gonna do a scheduled. And then you just want to input your values. Again, I'm in the test system, so we can enter some mock values. We'll put in a passing task. And there's some notes on the tests in the survey. So we had four kinds of notes. So the facility and hazard notes we already talked about are used in the backflow software for giving yourself and other people in the software information about the facility and the hazard. Tests in the survey notes, however, do load directly to the test and survey. And obviously, if you printed those out and gave to a customer, they would see them. So that's something to keep in mind. You can write a note or there's a couple of quick notes if you want to select one that's already written there. And then you can complete your test and you can see it immediately changed to passing. If you made a mistake, um, fat fingered it, as our guys say, you could edit the test and change it. Or when you're done, you're going to return to service and save your test. This is gonna move you directly to the signature screen where you can save a signature for the facility, have the facility representative sign and save their signature. So it gives the facility rep a little information where we are, what happened, the result of the test. And they can come in here and do their signature. And you just put their name in there. And then you save the signature. You can also save the dot signature or clear it if you didn't like the way that it looked. Now, when you do a test, it automatically puts you back to the hazard listing screen so that you can run through all the facilities, excuse me, all the devices in the facility. When you do a survey, it'll put you back at the control panel. So we've gone back to hazard listing. You can see we got little red triangles for the data that had changed. The software will show you whatever has changed since the last time you were in it. And we could do this other test if we wanted. We got a quick button here if we want to jump back to the control panel. We can do that. So if we opened a piece of survey work, you can see again, it put us right on the facility screen just like it did before, but we can also just go right to the survey screen since we already looked at the has listing tab. Like the other screens, there's some default data at the type. And then just like the test screen, the surveyor auto loads, if you have a license configured in the backflow software, you're gonna select your type, just like the test screen. And then you're gonna go through the questions. 
so these should be very familiar to people who, who survey. And the only difference you're going to notice is that you might initially see there aren't quite as many questions as you normally see. So some of them are hidden until you say, um, until you say you need more information. So is it required? If you say yes, you can see it immediately popped in another question. What type is required? And you can give answers there. Just like the test screen, based on the answers you give, the survey is going to pass or fail you. This is a survey from Massachusetts. You can see we have the default contamination that is required. You have to select one of these. And then since this is a survey at the facility, it's going to show you devices that are in the facility or, or none in the case of this one, if we don't have any. You can add existing devices that are physically in the building into the software here from the survey screen instead of having to go back to the has listing screen. That way, as you walk around, you can stay on the survey screen. And if you find any violations, you would enter those here. And then you would complete your survey and save your survey. We also have a feature where you can save a draft. So if you're in a really large building like a hospital or um, a really large university building or something like that, and you you need to go over two days, you can save the draft. You do not have to go back and find the draft in a different way. You would just go back to the control panel and open this piece of work, assuming we had saved it, which we didn't, but assuming we had, you could go back to the control panel, open the piece of work, and it would load your draft survey. So we really quickly went through tests and surveys. If we go to the menu, we can see that there's some notices. The notices are in two places. There's the queue, what has not been printed yet and needs to be printed, and what has been printed and could be reprinted if you wanted to. These are grouped together. So that's the gray uh, lighting that you see on there. They're grouping together. Um, you can also export this grid. You can export the history grid. You can export most of the grids in the backflow software. And then there's invoices, which are also very similar to the notices. There's uh, the queue that has the invoices that have not been printed and the history that has the invoices that have been printed. And then one other thing I'd really like to show you is the dashboard. So this is your reports. Here's the year end report, also known as the ASR report. There's the billing report. We talked about this earlier that could be used to um, produce billing data to be given to your billing department if they want to enter them manually. And then there's the productivity report. We also mentioned that in the uh, backflow slides that talks about how much work each one of your testers is, or surveyors has done. And then there's a lot of other reports to help you find um, devices that are compliant, um, any that have been surveyed or not surveyed, et cetera. It's a lot of reports there. So that's a really, really quick look at the Backflow software. If you have any questions, please reach out to us and we would be happy to give you a um, more complete and even an interactive demo where you could play with it yourself. Again, my name is Amy. Thank you so much for your time.